Welcome to the New Europe studios where you can watch us make the news. Today I'm talking to Professor Louis Nell. He's one of the world's leading experts on rabies, a disease which we used to hear a lot about several decades ago, but we don't hear so much these days. So the Professor Nell is here to explain why we don't hear about it, what we should be hearing and what we should be doing about it. So, Professor, thank you very much for joining us. Now, first of all, some people won't really understand what exactly rabies is. Uh, could you just give us a little bit of background on the, on the disease? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, and it's, it's really a pleasure to be here. You know, uh, rabies is one of the most fearful diseases on the planet. It is, it is deadly. Uh, it has the highest case fatality ratio of all diseases. So it is fatal. It is a viral disease. Um, it is very well adapted to the mammalian brain. So the virus makes its way to the brain and once in the brain the disease sets on and that is fatal. Uh, it is of course horrible um, because it, it really transforms the individual, the host. Um, it creates uh, aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. um, it, it evolved this mechanism uh, to then also ensure its own transmission. It, was, mm -hmm. it affects the brain in such a way that, uh, that the animal becomes aggressive and mad. At the same time, the virus migrates to the salivary glands mm -hmm. and it replicates in the salivary glands. Uh, it's then excreted into the saliva. And when this animal bites another, the virus is deposited in this way. And then in the new host, uh, moves along the peripheral nerves back up to the brain and causes this horrific disease. So that's rabies, um, uh, rabies virus. Now, we used to have some fears in, in Europe about rabies, but we seem to have done reasonably well at controlling it. But it still is a disease that affects a tremendous number of people. Could you tell us just a little bit about the distribution and the effects of the disease? So, um, so rabies uh, in, in Europe, uh, I think you've very, very, uh, you were very successful in controlling the disease and eliminating the disease in dogs um, in Western Europe. Um, this is not the case in the developing world. Uh, so we're talking about um, Africa, we're talking about Asia. So the, 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 the major burden of rabies would be in on these two continents so that's where dog rabies is completely endemic and 99 plus percent of all human rabies cases are then associated with these uh, continents so in other words the developing world of africa and and asia to some extent it's then a disease that affects the poorest of the poor um, and that is why it loses visibility uh, mm -hmm. to a large extent okay. And if I remember, how, how many people die each year from rabies? Yes, yeah, so the latest estimates put it at, at between 60 and 75,000 um, uh, cases per, per year, human cases per year. I mean, that, that, that is an alarmingly high figure. Yes, it is. Uh, and particularly because each of those deaths are unnecessary. They, it, it, it's a disease that can be prevented. You know, um, rabies is not only the most deadly disease on earth, but it is one of very few viral diseases that can be prevented both before or and after exposure. So that is, I mean, that, so you can be vaccinated against rabies pre-exposure, which would protect you against the disease. But even if you have not been vaccinated and you are exposed to a rabid animal, you can get treatment which, which would prevent you from developing the disease. So, each of these deaths could have been prevented. And it's also, is, there's been, as it were, a double failure before every death. It's first of all, we have, there aren't national or, or, or effective immunization campaigns. And then secondly, after someone does become infected or suspects that they might be infected, 
there isn't the infrastructure or the supply or whatever to, to get a vaccine to that person in that, in that window before the disease takes hold. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. So accessibility to the vaccine, and this, hap this needs to be in time, so accessibility and affordability of the vaccine. These are then key issues um, to prevent human deaths from rabies. So w the, the vaccine will need kind of, it needs refrigeration? Indeed, um, there's a cold chain necessary for the, uh, for the vaccine uh, and for the immune globulin that's also administered uh, in a post-exposure uh, scenario. Now, you're also working on the, with the World Health Organization and the Gates Foundation on this. And what you just said uh, struck a chord is, is there's often fringe benefits. So if we got the systems in place where uh, health services in fragile countries had example the cold chain where they could keep the virus cold, that would also have many other benefits for many other medicines, would it not? Yes, that is, that is absolutely true. But you know, we're looking at another paradigm. Um, Rabies is essentially an animal disease. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the cases in humans would be what we call spillover or incidental cases, even though th that number is unacceptably high, right? We're yeah. talking about 70,000. But the paradigm would be to prevent or eliminate the disease in the reservoir. So if you can eliminate the disease in the, in the domestic dog, the reservoir, 99% of human cases come from infected dogs. If you can eliminate in dogs, you would then prevent human rabies in, in, in that way as well. So that would be the long-term solution, mm -hmm. would be uh, to eliminate mm -hmm. uh, rabies in the domestic dog and in that way prevent um, human rabies. I don't mean to say that you, that you shouldn't have post-exposure treatment. Of course you should. Uh, but in the long term, the, we believe the solution would be to eliminate the disease in the reservoir. So that is in the domestic dog, and this can be done. This has been shown in Europe, mm -hmm. has been very effectively. There. Remember, in the 1800s, rabies was a scourge in yeah. Europe and, and in the UK, and, and, um, and it's been eliminated in dogs. Uh, it's been eliminated in dogs in, in, the, in North America, mm -hmm. uh, in Europe. Uh, the virus made a comeback in red foxes, so and strategies were changed, new vaccines were developed, and it was even eliminated in foxes in Europe. So it can be done, mm -hmm. provided that you have a plan and a strategy and you're willing to see it through. Now, it's very interesting you see that this we, we, if we chose to and put the right resources, we could consign rabies to the dustbin of history alongside smallpox and yours. I mean, yes. how... how realistic is it for that to be an achievable goal it is a it is a mammoth task i you know i mm. i have absolutely no doubt about that but it can be done and as i just said to you th there are examples of that so it's been done in europe um, it's been done in north america it's been done in isolated countries mm -hmm. elsewhere it can be done we have to have a target. I think, you know, I, you, if you don't have a target, there's nothing to reach. So I think, um, so that is why uh, we're looking at the 2030 target date. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's to have something to aim for. It's an ambition. Uh, and to work towards such a target, you need to have a plan. Uh, and I think that's where, that's where we, as the, as the Global Alliance, together with our partners called the Partners for Rabies Prevention, which include the, uh, the OAE, the WHO, the FAO, all of the rabies uh, reference mm -hmm. laboratories and collaborating centers. And we've developed what is called the blueprint for rabies control. And within okay. that blueprint, so that's the technical aspects of how, to how can countries go about um, to control rabies. Mm -hmm. And in that blueprint, we have the stepwise approach to rabies elimination, which would place countries uh, in five different um, steps so mm -hmm. that they can identify where they are on that scale between naught, where really nothing is happening, and five, where rabies has been eliminated. So they can place themselves within that scale and then from there work out what are the next steps to go to, 
to, to the next level. So that is a plan that can be measured. Um, and this is what we want to um, advocate through, uh, through networks, regional networks, which would be platforms mm -hmm. where one can work through these documents and help countries um, to place themselves and help them to see what are the next steps to take. In this way, and if we do this conscientiously, I think the, uh, the 2030 target becomes realistic. Okay. I mean, is this something that has to be regional? I mean, because the animal world, especially dogs, do not uh, recognize borders. So I is there really a limit to what a nation alone can do? Does it need this regional kind of approach? So it's a very good point. Um, it's a transboundary disease. You, you, you're absolutely right. And, and for that reason, um, r regional approaches and good neighborliness comes into play. And that is why we think in our regional platforms we can advocate that. Um, and, and hopefully countries can influence, neighbor countries can influence one another, uh, mo be motivated by each other, hopefully through the successes in their control programs. Um, so you're absolutely right. And also, different regions of the world differ. So even though the blueprint, technically the same principles, there are certain aspects that are different in Southeast Asia from, say, Sub-Saharan Africa, and these things also need to be um, taken into account. Okay. I mean, Europe is doing a, a lot of work on development, and this is the European Year of Development. Is it, is, are we kind of conscious enough about the effects that rabies is having on some of these communities? Because we, we're talking constantly about working with the poorest of the poor. And this seems to be, from what you're saying, a disease that's found in the poorest of the poor. Are, are we really responding to this well enough? Well, for, from, from our perspective, the Global Alliance for Rabies Control, um, we believe that the disease doesn't get the priority that it needs. And the, we understand the reasons for that. And, and part of the reason is, uh, you know, why it gets such a low priority is because it isn't reported effectively enough. It's a disease that can be difficult to diagnose in the laboratory. Um, so, uh, uh, so oftentimes there would be only one laboratory in a country where maybe uh, an analysis can be done and then the, these samples need to be transported to that focal point. Poor infrastructure would uh, negate that to a large extent. So we don't see the numbers that we know are out there and this leads to, to the neglect. So that is the point. So people don't realize that actually this, this disease is rampant in some mm. areas of the world because the numbers just don't get out. Um, so that's what we set out to do as the Global Alliance. We created World Rabies Day, which falls on, on 28 September each year. Mm -hmm. That incidentally um, is, the, uh, uh, is the anniversary of Louis Pasteur's death. So that's very poignant and uh, it's significant. Mm -hmm. uh, and we created World Rabies Day to create more awareness. Um, this has helped, but we need to, we need to do more. Um, we certainly, we have in Europe um, the collaborating centers uh, and, uh, and reference laboratories realizing um, you, you know, this need elsewhere in the world, but more can be done. And that's what we're trying to set out to do. Okay, and, and just really, what, how has y Europe responded to your message? Because you've been visiting Brussels on a very intensive visit, vi vi visiting, yes, indeed. discussing with everyone who counts. Are people listening? Yeah. Oh yes, I think you know people. Uh, people want to do good, uh, and people want to make a difference. And of course, there there are many causes uh, in the world to care about. Mm. Uh, so um, you just have to get your facts straight. But people do want to make a difference and they do want to, to, to help. I, I absolutely believe in the kindness of humanity in that sense. And, and I believe the response um, to what we, what we are trying to do has been very, very positive. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm thankful for that. And there are several opportunities going forward. Yeah. You seem, as it, to round up, you, you're in a very good position. You've got a good global alliance with you. You've got some 
very hard hitting names supporting you, the foundations and things like that. And most of all, you, you have a cure. Absolutely. We have the biologics, we have the methods, it can be done. Uh, we have the support, we have the partners for rabies prevention, we have global buy in. Um, it's about putting it all together and staying the course. Yeah. And of course, you're, you're preparing the blueprint, you're getting the plans ready, you're advising regions and national governments. Surely the, the money can't be that much of an issue here for this problem. Yeah, so, so, so money, um, money is always an issue, yeah. uh, but it is about what we should be very careful that we should understand that, that it's not only money that would drive the success of this program. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe money will flow in where um, it's clear to investors that it can make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, investors know what they do. Yeah. So I, uh, uh, I have no doubt about that. Um, so it will be always a process of, of, um, of getting in place supporters. You know, in this whole, if we think about an end rabies campaign, we need people to support it, believe in it. Uh, but I think it's only one component. And in our lifetime, we could see an end to this absolutely. dreadful disease. I absolutely believe that. Okay. Well, I'm Thank sure you. we'd all like to wish the professor and all of his colleagues all over the world in every success in ridding this disease that we've managed to more or less eliminate from Europe. And now we just need to make sure it's eradicated from every corner of the world and help those who need the help the most. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much. Much appreciated.